What's good, crime family? Hope you're having a good day today. If not, I hope the video will bring a little light to your day today. Ladies and gentlemen, we're checking out how a tiny cat dog took over the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's my evil laugh. Let's get straight into it, man. Um, oh, big. Let's go with the big form video, the bigger video. What does the fox say? <laughs> what does the fox say? Bro. <laughs> what does the fox say? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Cleo. <laughs> Why do you sound like a hyena? All right, pop quiz. What is the most widespread carnivore on earth? Out of all of those animals in the world, which one managed to spread further and thrive in more places than any other? This isn't rhetorical, I'm gonna say the by cat. the way. Comment your answer. It's gotta be like curious. a cat. All votes in? Okay, good. Cats are everywhere. It's the red fox. I huh? don't know when it happened, but somewhere in the history of Earth, there was a subplot where the fox took over the world, and they have not let up since. Today, there's about 23 flavors of fox seasoning this big ball of dirt and water with well over 40 subspecies on their roster. And they are everywhere. From griefing gardens in the suburbs, to pickpocketing polar bears in the north, to murking koalas in Australia, what just in the believe we gonna get to that. You can find some Vulpes variant virtually anywhere in the world that isn't the ocean or Antarctica. And the biggest flex of the foxes is the red fox. Despite being in the weight class of a small dog, no other mammalian carnivore owns more real estate. And even though they're invited to the carnivore cookout, technically they're omnivores. They're which adorable. means they eat, and I do not say this lightly, everything. Rabbits, rodents, birds, frogs, worms, fish, crabs, clams, insects, lizards, eggs, fruits, plants, garbage, cat food, dog food, carry on, and I don't mean the bag, Bro. and actual feces. Literally their whole meal plan is, if it doesn't kill them first, they'll eat it. Foxes are also able to exploit the Earth's magnetic hey, fields yo, that's catch crazy. bodies. You've probably seen this thing foxes do where they'll swan dive into a pile of snow. It's so <laughs> cute. It's called mousing, and foxes are able to use magnetic fields as this kind of internal GPS, and they cross-reference that with a broken sense of hearing to figure out exactly where their target is and exactly where they land a critical hit. Foxes pretty much that's have a real-life wall hack, and they're one of the few animals to hunt like this. They're also smart enough to memorize the migration patterns of certain species of birds, meaning they know the exact time to pull up for free and easy protein. Not Foxes as also managed wow. to figure out the same with some turtles, since timing it right after they lay their eggs and peace out means low effort omelets. Call that over easy. And Bro. arguably, no place is foxed around and found out more That's than crazy. Australia. Because way back in the 1800s, Europeans airdropped red foxes to the land down under for the sport of fox hunting. Evidently, the foxes weren't about to go down like that. To the point where a couple years ago, and it's estimated it that over 7 million foxes exist in Australia as a perpetual middle finger to the settlers that thought they'd be light work. Some unhinged foxes seven even learned to million? climb trees in order to snatch- Excuse me? So how many cats are there? Like, bro, I really thought cats would be the main, like, animal that's, like, everywhere, bro. You see cats everywhere, man baby koalas and sugar gliders, proving that any animal that gets introduced to Australia will inevitably become a problem. And now, foxes and feral cats are like the Kobe and Shaq of putting native Australian animals on a shirt. That ability to adapt means foxes are one of the very few predators that do better in cities. Not as well, not really? almost as well, no, better. Today, the highest density of foxes living in Britain are shacking it up in the city. In some neighborhoods, you'll find twice as many fox families than you would in the countryside, and 200 times as many than in some desolate moors. And even though they get straight up bullied by bigger canines, foxes don't rely on a pack structure the same way wolves do. And they have enough pretty privilege to dodge the smoke everyone seems to have for coyotes. It not also helps that they're nocturnal and move like introverts. Mama fox will go out of her way to clean the den area so well that the average person can walk right past it and not even realize there's a whole family underground. And just like with birds, foxes will study and memorize the schedule of humans in the area and only come out when it's least active. They'll no even way. take advantage of garbage schedules so they know exactly when to come root through your trash. What and they'll the even world? take note of what times you often feed your pets so that they can steal their share. And you may never even notice. Depending on where you live, you can probably count on one hand how many foxes you've seen in your neighborhood. Exactly. Even if you've lived around them your entire life. And lucky for them, they happen to be just cute enough to not have to worry about getting their existence nuked like some of their predators. See, this is how they, you know, going to stay in the game, you know, memorizing when humans are out, you know, memorizing when food go out. Like, like that's genius, bruh. Speaking of which, let's talk about the many enemies of the fox. You got wolves, coyotes, cougars, lynxes, birds of prey, bears, wolverines, cars, and many, many more. Because the one bad thing about being a fox is everything on the census either wants to eat you or wants to kill you because you eat the same things. In fact, the first and sometimes last enemy they'll make is their family. 
Fox Cubs will fight their siblings off rip in order to establish a hierarchy. And it's not the wow. cute Disney play fighting I used to think it was. 20% of Fox kids born will never leave the den. It's just straight violence out the womb. I can't even say it's on site since baby foxes lived the Helen Keller experience what for the first the two heck? weeks of their life. Oh Lucky my for gosh. them, foxes often mate for life and bring up the kids together. I mentioned this in the Father's Day episode last video, but fox fathers will hide food around the den in these little pantries in order to teach his kids how to find food for themselves. I want Bro, foxes need therapy ASAP. I want you to keep that pantry thing in mind. We're going to come back to that. Fox cubs have a couple months of a grace period before they have to go out and figure out life on their own. Lucky for them, they're part of the most unfairly versatile group of animals you'll ever see. Like, did you know foxes can climb trees? No, I don't mean like fully scale that, John. The gray fox has been seen ascending over 70 feet up into a tree and they're one of the few foxes that flex retractable claws which allows gray of foxes course. to avoid conflict with predators like coyotes go ahead and ask cheetahs how important that is tree climbing only proves that foxes are just cat software marrying dog hardware a cat dog if you will and it shows that there isn't a lot of real estate on earth that a fox can't claim and no fox proves this more than my personal favorite the arctic fox because this igloo Aww. puppy has zero business surviving out here it looks adorable. not only is it cold enough to get one shot by wind the arctic fox also has ops like wolves and polar bears to worry about and since pretty much anything goes in satan's ice rink both of them will not hesitate to eat a fun-sized fox and it really be your own kind since another unlikely menace to an ice fox's life so i wonder is that like a reason why most animals that's like in the snow like their fur is like the color of the snow or maybe that's like a a tactic to survive a survival tactic maybe they have to evolve into white fur to survive out there because i see a lot of animals that's in the cold their fur is always white is the red fox because as small as they are the red fox is still two to three times bigger than their snowy cousins and yes red foxes will 100 percent murk and eat their weaker relatives if it means surviving so you think it'd be curtains for any pint-sized predator that even tries out here Jeez. well about that don't think for a second arctic foxes don't have their tricks too they'll strategically follow polar bears for miles just to clean off whatever they don't finish we're talking about a house cat sized fox slipping food from the literal biggest land predator on the Imagine. planet while also managing to stay far enough to avoid getting their consciousness confiscated permanently. <laughs> These baby face survivors will even resort to scavenging the polar bear's food, yeah, except after it's funny. already been digested and taken the south exit. Yeah, they're a different kind of potty mouth, but the arctic fox has a secret to never having to miss a meal. These Q-tip terriers have a pantry system where they'll bury any extra food in a network of underground dens, which can stretch across 20 miles. And it's these food supplies that keeps the arctic foxes pulse going in the dead of winter. There was even one time where researchers uncovered a fox cellar containing 38 birds, 4 rabbits, and about a dozen eggs. God it's damn. on a thousand, but it's what keeps them euro stepping death and ghosting the grim Rope. reaper. This cotton colored can apocalypse. has one more trick too. Coming in all white helps the glacier jockey cosplay as a snowdrift in order to avoid predators. But once the sun finally makes an appearance like an absentee father on tax day, the longer daylight triggers hormonal change. That's beautiful, changes man. that causes them to change coats. Bro, go day. back. Look at this shot. Like the clouds falling out the mountains, man. That's beautiful. The longer daylight triggers hormonal changes. Changes that causes them to change coats. They go from whiter than a party in the Hamptons to a thinner coat that matches the tundra the Arctic turns into. And it's all these abilities that allows the chameleon of foxes to live in one of the most unlivable places Very on smart. Earth. And so does the smallest fox in the world. On the other side of the spectrum, the fennec fox survives oh, in a very ears. different kind of desert. It's the smallest canine in the world and could probably get bodied by a chihuahua. Those massive ears are good for three things. Yo, getting bodied by a chihuahua has got to be embarrassing, bro. It's the smallest canine in the world and could probably get bodied by a chihuahua. Those <laughs> massive ears are good for three things. Increasing their overall surface area to help keep them cool, the same way elephant ears do. Helping them pinpoint the insects, lizards, and rodents on its grocery list, even while they're underground. And for looking absolutely adorable doing it. They are like adorable. I said, foxes are broken, especially since fennex can live off the moisture they get from food and by licking the dew from their dens. Not only that, but their kidneys are actually designed to function off very little actual water, making this travel-sized fox one of the few animals able to survive in the desert without drinking actual water. And as a human, you wow. tap out from life after about three days of a water fast. In fact, where the fennec fox may never have to drink at all, the average adult should drink about 48 ounces a day. That's just over two of these which can often feel like a chore but arabs flavor pods makes it way easier. nice transition pods actually let's go to trick your brain by using scent flavors traveling to your brain to replicate the taste of whatever pod you chose whole time you're just drinking plain water just fill the bottle up pull the pod to activate the flavor hold the bottle upright in yeah that, that that's pretty much it 
My personal favorite is mango passion fruit, but you have a variety of options like watermelon, peach, cucumber, orange, apple, and a bunch more. And again, there's no calories, no sugar, it's just you gas out your brain, since about 80% of taste is actually dependent on smell. Now, I've never had a problem drinking enough water, but after deciding to try to cut down on sodas and juices, I can honestly say Arab has come in clutch more than a few times. And you know this isn't just an ad, I literally tell y'all to drink water in every single video. And now I can help with that. So make sure you check out Air Up in the link in the that. description. Use the code CASUALGEO15 for 15% off. And like always, make sure y'all staying hydrated out there. Hydration isn't a problem for a pocket sized sand pup. Oh, and by the way, since their kidneys are always on desert mode, Fenix fox pee is super concentrated and smells like pee pee le pew. And since foxes will pee yeah. on any surface, two hours with a fennec under your roof and your house will smell like a skunk orgy. So yeah, don't be confusing them for good pets. You shouldn't confuse them for a pale fox either. That's offensive to them. They look similar, but the pale fox is slightly bigger, so has a small. smaller range, and is overall the less clouded dupe of the fennec. And if you take a quick trip a couple hundred miles down south, you'll find the bat-eared fox. Unlike the rest of the fox family, their meal plan contains almost entirely insects, with most of their protein coming from termites. Those satellite dish ears allows it to eavesdrop on termite affairs before it packs them. They've even gone ahead and invested in extra teeth to help with their termite terminating tendencies. Bat ears also acts on fox like by living in packs, usually made of a mating pair and their ch I didn't know there was this many a variety of foxes, I'm not gonna hold you. Learn something new every day. Children, kind of the same way wolf packs work. It's like a fox that slept through the lecture on how to fox 101, which actually makes a lot of sense since technically bat-eared foxes aren't true foxes. There are 12 species that earn the title of true fox, and four of them we've already mentioned. The red fox, the arctic, the fennec, and the pale fox. Yeah, I'm Another mostly true fox know is the, the Tibetan fox. fox. What the No, I'm heck? serious. That's exactly what they look like. Like a reborn human realizing the incarnation ain't always sweet. Or like nature got drunk and tried redrawing foxes. Kind of like a wolf. And then uploaded it as a dare. It's the only animal able to side-eye you while looking you dead in the face. A picture's worth a thousand words, and every image of a Tibetan fox tells a story of apathy, indifference, and a splash of contempt. Now you might be wondering why this fox looks like an AI-generated renaissance painting. Some say it's to help them cope with a windy environment. Some say it's because their skulls are specialized for carnivory. I say God or nature, whoever did this to them has a twisted sense of humor. Evidently, the Tibetan fox does not. <laughs> also, you know the whole coyote badger team up that we all love so much and can't get enough of? Apparently, the Tibetan fox has the same type of arrangement with Himalayan brown bears, where the bears will dig out pika burrows, that's a pika, and force them to run on land, where they get chased down by the fox. The fox isn't the digger the bear is, but the fox has better foot speed, so like any true dynamic duo, they cover each other's weaknesses. Bro, the more I look at that fox, he's like a human face is crazy. Even if one of them looks allergic to oxygen. I'm gonna run through a couple more foxes real quick. We have Blanford's fox, found in the Middle East and Central Asia. They're easily the goats of foxes, able to scale anything short of 90 degrees and able to do the equivalent of a 10 foot box jump by leaping onto ledges. There's the Kit Fox of the Southwest, also known as the San Joaquin Fox, and they're basically the American edition of the Fennec Fox. We can't forget about the Corsac Fox of the Mongolian Steppe and Central Asian deserts. Then you got the Cape Fox of South America and the slightly bigger Indian-based Bengal Fox. I was not kidding, unless your neighbors with the cast of Happy Feet, there's likely more foxes in your area than hot singles just dying to meet you. So foxes it's just like, so that they foxes are there, of a but they poke. know how to hide. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Cross Fox. It's actually a wow. red fox with partial melanism. You know, the same thing that turns leopards and jaguars into black panthers. They're more common in Canada, where up to a third of the red fox population has this bimelanated alternate skin. And even rarer than them are silver foxes, which is just a red fox with complete melanism, gang. Cause yeah, red foxes aren't always red. <laughs> I just realized what he did there. <laughs> like I said, foxes exist in many forms, but there's one final form not even they saw coming, pets. That's right, there's a population of domestic foxes in the world as we speak. Basically, the lore goes this guy, Dmitry Belyaev, asked a question. How did we go from this apex predator to a lapdog? So he and graduate Ludmila Trut tried to see if they could replicate the wolf domestication process, except with foxes. They created a fox farm with 100 vixens and 30 males, and which foxes got to mate depended on which ones were the most tolerant of humans. The most human-friendly foxes fornicated, and this process repeated itself with the next generation. Essentially, they were selecting for traits that would make them the most fit for human companionship. And as the experiment wore on, the foxes went from not fearful of people, to tolerant of people, to actively seeking out people. Later generations would wow. develop an affinity towards humans, sniffing and licking people, and even replacing the aggressive yips and shrieks with more passive whimpers and pants. That is but what so we weren't expecting was, as their personalities and attitudes towards people changed, so did their bodies. The more people-friendly foxes sported droopy ears and curled up tails, which is pretty different from the upright ears and downwards pointed tails of their wild cousins. 
And after decades of successfully playing God with foxes, we now live in a world where you can adopt and own a pet silver fox. That is crazy. Now, here's a part man. of the video where I tell you why you ain't ready for that. They poop and Wait. pee everywhere, and there isn't a surface in the uh, house they can't get to. Hey, you little know. shit. They scream, especially at night. They'll be finding out what the fox says while you're trying to count sheep. Not to mention yeah. you're probably gonna sacrifice furniture for their- They're adorable, but I, I don't know if I could- Like, dogs, like, kind of terrible. You know, cats don't really make too much noise, but that right there, I don't know if I could tolerate that. Happiness. <laughs> that combination adds up to a good They're chance adorable, you're up at 3 a.m. cleaning fox feces off the top of your fridge while cursing yourself for not just getting a hamster. Right. Just give me a hamster, if you do the research and you're committed enough, but, and I'm gonna say this as many times as it's applicable, if you're that willing to sacrifice your sleep, sanity, and social life for a screaming, pooping, derecio of a creature, just have children. Because foxes are great wild animals, but they can really <laughs> oh my be good as hell pets. But that's gonna do it for this video. Friendly reminder that I do have a book out. It's called 100 Animals That Can or That Did Kill You. Link in the description if you're interested. Shout out to Arab for sponsoring this video. Shout out to you all for watching this video. Drink water, wear sunscreen, touch grass, hug your parents, and I'ma see y'all in the, next, in the one. next one. Let's oh, yeah. go. Happy birthday to me. Oh, happy birthday, happy my guy. Are you my happy porky birthday. potato? Are you my porky potato? Hi. Hi. Yo. Oh my gosh. Hey, you. Bro. Is he gonna let it go or nah? Oh, he snatched it from her. That's. <laughs> oh my goodness, nah. Oh, no, no, no. That noise. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I hurt your ears. But yeah, man, I hope y'all enjoyed my reaction video. I had to switch it up. I should have been dropped it. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to start switching the video out because a lot of casual videos, his, his face be down here. So I just move it out there for now. But yeah, I uh, hope y'all enjoyed my reaction video, man. Stay tuned for more casual geographic reaction videos coming soon. Until next time, deuces.